There everybody, sorry I am late. I am, I was realizing that um, I wasn't completely as ready as I thought I was today. <laughs> and I was printing my stuff off and then I thought, oh my gosh, it's past 10 o'clock already. So, sorry about that. And it is Thursday, Food Allergy Mom Coffee Chat. I am Karina from Friendly Pantry and I help food allergy moms keep their kids safe while living a normal life at home, at social events, at school, and while traveling. And today I'm gonna to talk about avocados. So last week, if you saw, I did um, a post or in a video on making salsa. And you know what? The best thing that goes with salsa is a really good guacamole. And so I really wanted to follow it up with that because I know a lot of you are looking for delicious like snacks that you can give your kids that are easy, healthy, and quick. And so I thought the best thing to do is a, is a guacamole. But then I also thought there are so many other good things about avocados. I really wanted to go into it a little bit, especially if you have a milk allergy or your kids have a milk allergy. So let me know about if you're here and if you are watching with your kids, let me know in the comments. Um, I know some of you, sorry, my phone is, some of you are off on holidays. Maybe there's not a lot around today because in Canada Day yesterday, we had our um, big Canada Day and I know that the 4th of July is happening in, um, in the US. So hopefully you guys are all enjoying that and you're keeping safe and healthy. But anyways, I want to, let you know about, before we get into the avocados, I'm gonna talk a lot about you know storing them, what they can be used for with a milk allergy, um, all that kind of stuff. But I wanna talk about a workshop that I'm doing in a couple of weeks. It's about explaining food allergy to friends and family and making that super easy. So if you have ever heard a little bit won't matter or um, something like, can you just pick the allergen out or if you've ever felt like a helicopter mom who's over worried about, um, you know, at events and things like that, this is the workshop for you. You're gonna learn how to explain food allergies so you feel confident, so you're not hurting people's feelings, and so you are able to really get across how serious food allergies are. So I want you to check that out. It's in a couple of weeks. It's at friendlypantry.com and find it there, learn more about it there. I know you're gonna love it. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about avocados. And they are super healthy and delicious. I know, you know, many people know how healthy they are and good for you. Um, but did you know that they are a really great simple dairy replacer? So we don't have a milk allergy anymore. We did have one, my daughter outgrew her milk allergy but I still use them now in my recipes and at home to replace certain things in, in recipes because I know how good they are and healthy. So here's a couple of places I've used them before. I've used them as a one-on-one -on -one butter replacer. So in cookies that are chocolate, um, like a double chocolate cookie, they definitely work. They work amazing because the chocolate of the, um, the double chocolate is going to cover that um, greenish color and it's just, you know, I'm gonna notice the difference. There's a little bit more of a cakey texture, but you know what, in my opinion, that's still, that's really good. So um, it doesn't make a big difference. I've used it as a sour cream replacer. So if you're making tacos, I mean, guacamole on tacos is really great, but if you wanna kind of use it more as a sour cream replacer, you can, cream it up even more than with guacamole. So make it really, really smooth and add more, a little bit more lemon to make it tart. And that's gonna give you a little bit more of that sour cream flavor. Now, you could go way overboard. You could go all out and you could even add like cumin or other Mexican spices to that and make it like a crema and it's gonna be even more delicious. So one idea there. Another one is to put it into smoothies to make them creamy instead of yogurt. Because avocado has that really nice creamy texture and it's gonna help you get that in a smoothie. So 
what I'm talking about here, I, I definitely go into more detail in my online course, Quick and Easy Food Allergy Cooking. And what I teach there is using these simple ingredients to replace allergens so that you're not having to worry about all of the finding them, are they in the specialty aisles. Most of the time, these simple ingredients, the store is going to have them in stock. So if you can learn how to use those in your cooking, if you can learn how to use um, what textures you're replacing and what flavors you're replacing, instead of just looking for brands all the time, it's really gonna help you. It's gonna make things a lot easier for you. So I really want to um, make sure you check out my, my course. It goes more into detail about that, but think about in the recipe, when you're making it, what texture are you looking for? What flavor are you looking for? And what can actually do that for you when in a simple ingredient? Okay, so that's what I wanted to talk about with avocados, but some people have a hard time buying them. Uh, they don't know what to look for. Um, this one here, I think you can see it's pretty green. It's quite hard. This one is not ripe yet. Um, you want it to be blacker, kind of really dark brown. And you can see that this one is getting that way. There's some brown patches. I don't know if that comes through really well, but um, it's, it's getting that way. So when I buy avocados, I usually like to buy ones that are, like if I buy a bag of them, I'll buy ones that some that are a little more further along so that as they ripen, I can use them. But don't worry, once they ripen, um, so you're gonna, when they are ripen, you're gonna feel that they're just a little bit soft to the touch. They're gonna give a little bit more. Uh, they're not gonna be like, this one is quite hard. There's really no give and it's just not gonna be ready. You're not gonna wanna use it um, until it gets ready. But to ripen it up, I want you to put it with, if you need it really quick, put it with a, um, a banana. And if you kind of keep it with a banana in your pantry, it's gonna ripen faster than if you don't. The bananas give off some sort of ripening gas that makes it go faster. <laughs> So you can do that, and once it gets to the place that you want it, to, that it's like perfectly ripe, that you wanna keep it there, you can't use it right away, put it in your fridge, because that's actually gonna really slow down the ripening of the avocado. It's not gonna stop it completely, because it is gonna get to that point where it's overripe at some point, but if you put it in there, you're gonna keep it for a week to two weeks, maybe even three weeks, just depending. So, but you do, you do have to kind of wait until it gets right before you do that. That's what I find it works better. So that's going to keep it for a lot longer, which is really, really nice. Okay, let me go back to my notes. Make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Slow the ripening down. Okay, then once, also once they get ripe, you can freeze them if you want to. Just um, cut them in half, take off their... Um, their shell, I guess you could call it, and just freeze it flat onto a cookie sheet, and then put it, once it's frozen, put it into a Ziploc bag, because that's going to keep them separate and not go well together. Um, you can also, um, once you open it up, is put it into, face down into water. Now, this is new, I haven't heard this, I, I haven't tried this yet, but I think that it has a lot of promise. So. I really think it's gonna it's gonna work, but I haven't tried it, so that's my, my disclaimer. But to put it into face down into water, and just put a um, like I would probably use um, like a sh let's say a container like this. Put it face down, and of course it's gonna be half, and then put a, a seal over top. That's gonna help it from stopping it from browning, and then you just drain it out, and you get it and use it and cut it up. Um, and then another way you can do it is, of course, just making sure it's in an airtight container and putting lemon juice all over it. And that works, but I don't, I still don't find that it's the best. So um, it's not gonna do it for like two days or anything. So keep that in mind with that one. So that is how you keep them. Now, did I go through everything? Do you guys have any questions about avocado? Oh, I wanted to make sure that you knew about how to cut them. So this one is definitely too ripe. Sorry, not ripe enough, so I don't wanna cut into it yet. But to cut it is really, you would just go around and just use it on your um, cutting board. 
kind of down like this. Go to cut down till you get to the stone and turn it around. And then you just pull it, twist it and pull it apart. And one side is going to have the pit and that to remove the pit, you grab a spoon and you just scoop it out. And I know that there's a lot of this really common thing where people um, kind of smack their, their knife into the pit and then twist it. Don't do that. It's super, super dangerous. My neighbor sliced her whole hand open by doing that. And I know that I have almost done that as well. So definitely not something that's really safe. So I just, now I just use a small spoon and I scoop it out. And just a little tip, some people say that that, that pit actually helps keep the avocado um, from turning brown as well. So if you, keep, if you want to put it in the fridge, keep the, the pit in there with it and that will help. All right, that's avocados. That is, like they are really an amazing fruit. I love them. I think they're a fruit, not a veggie. Don't quote me on that but they are so great to put in almost everything and i hope that really helps you kind of get your mind going about how you can use them and what um how to actually buy them and keep them let me know if you have comments if you are watching the replay make sure you um, type in hashtag replay any comments that i get helps facebook and instagram to see that you, this was helpful and that um, it will show it to more food allergy moms. So please do that, comment as much, like as much as you possibly can, that would be awesome. And that's it for now. So don't forget to check out my Explaining Food Allergies workshop that is coming up in a couple weeks. You don't wanna miss it. It's at friendlypantry.com. You will find it there. And for now, I'm going to sign off and bye for now. Thank you for joining me, bye.